Hello and welcome to the Car Care Not channel. So guys, today we have a 2007 Toyota Camry V6 LE, a trim they don't actually make anymore. They don't put the V6 in a car with hubcaps, which they still do, but they don't. This car has over 200,000 miles and the owner's word were they've owned this car for 11 years and it has this many miles and they hope after we do our inspection, see what it needs, that they would keep it for another 11 years. First thing you notice on this car is the 200,000 mile mark or imprint on the car. Look at the hood, all the paint peeling from all the rock chips of almost a quarter million mile of driving. It actually has more than 200. I'll show you the miles in a little bit. The concerns that we have is other than just a general inspection to see what's going on with the car is we have a check engine light that is on and they have a vibration in park and idle just the whole car shakes they say that the mechanic that has maintained this car is an older gentleman on his way to retirement he's not really familiar too much with toyota's he has kept this car maintained this car didn't really need much to reach 200,000 miles other than very basic maintenance but now we have some concerns and she wanted me to check them so we're going to do that and more right after this let's look under the hood first oh well the hood shocks are uh, done so I'm gonna have if you ever get this and in the meantime until you replace the hood shocks vice grips right here it's not going anywhere anymore yes the vice grips will actually damage this but it's done anyways so for now we're gonna have to do um, the first thing I notice is there is a uh, aftermarket oil cap not a problem but I always wonder why these are ever used they're exactly the same price as original but not a big issue let's pull the cover and the cover is just sitting there one grommet is left that's okay it's not the end of the world and there's a big old crack right here probably someone tried to pull it hard but at least they tried to glue it back again not a big issue this is just a beauty cover now I'm standing here and I can smell the oil burning smell it's that unmistakable smell of cars that leak oil so I'm gonna look for oil leaks here because I'm guarantee you we're gonna find some because I smell it the first thing is and uh, as I gaze my eyes here there is the first oil leak hope you can see it it's probably valve cover cam tower not major issue for now we're gonna keep looking Here's that uh, aftermarket oil fill cap. Looks like there is some work here because the power steering fluid is way overfilled. And looks like maybe they replaced this line because it's impossible that this Camry made it this far with this line not leaking. So it's probably been replaced at some point. And then here is our telltale sign. We've talked about this in another video. These are aftermarket, and I, I just don't understand why is it so hard to rip this before you install it and catch it with the body, but that's how it is. So these are aftermarket quick struts. And when you see this, these are quick struts, and that's something we'll talk about more when we uh, talk about the test drive I did. Got an aftermarket uh, perch valve right here. The hoses are oozing. That's what the word I'm gonna use here. I hope you can see them well right there. Actually, I noticed this one earlier, right there. Not a major concern, but something that we're going to mention to them and see if they want to deal with it. So, first impressions. There are some aftermarket goodness here. We have a vibration concern at idle, and the customer told me that their mechanic have replaced all the engine mounts. Possibly aftermarket, we're going to look at them. Possibly original, I don't know yet. But I'm, I'm looking at one thing here. This is just not sitting right. And this is the difference between an independent mechanic that works on every make and model. It's impossible for them to keep up with how everything should look like, what's known good. I work only in a Toyota and Lexus. Just by looking at that mount, it's not sitting right. So let's take a uh, 
closer look at it. It seems like it's just sitting too far forward, too far down, and the rubbers are not sitting right. And then when I look here, well, it's completely torn. I hope you can see that there's a tear all the way through. This mount is done. And this is, we call this the dog bone mount because it kind of looks like a dog bone. It's actually a torque rod. Every time you accelerate, the motor wants to lift up. This will keep it steady. So this will cause a lot of vibration. Very simple, two bolts mount comes out, not really expensive to replace. So that's the first thing that this car is going to need. Let's go check out the check engine light and we'll see what we got there before we lift up the car. We're going to use our aftermarket scan tool here. I left my tech stream at work. This is a wireless one. And while we're here, show you the miles. So we got 232, 153. Let's connect our uh, wireless plug here. Perfect. Keys on. Let's see what we got for codes. Fire up our scan tool here and turn it away so we can hide the customer's VIN number. Pretty sure they don't want to don't want us to show them that. Actually, this is a J card. So this is a Japanese built Camry. So let's get past this screen. It's asking me for the production date because this is actually an early 07. This is built in 2006 and it's a Japanese model. So the scantles always have a hard time recognizing these. Okay. So we're going to go system selection, powertrain, engine. So, we want read fault codes. Haha. -ha. So, we have a P0441 and a history P0441. This is an incorrect purge flow. The first thing we're going to do here is just to cover our basics. Since we have some aftermarket goodness in this car, let's look at our gas cap over here. This uh, very interesting gas cap, aftermarket gas cap, and this is the first problem. The aftermarket gas caps, they just don't have the right, they're, they're universal. This is fits all makes and models. There are Japanese, Toyota, Honda, whatever. That's the first problem. I'm looking at the filler neck here. I don't see any rust on it, so that's good. So let's put this back. Let's assume for now that this is good. Let's go under the hood. My first telltale sign that somebody's been chasing this problem. Aftermarket purge valve. And the second one, aftermarket mass airflow. This is, uh, these are the signs. Somebody's been trying to chase after this problem. And I already see this hose is loose. This hose is loose. And we're going to have to spend some time diagnosing this problem because somebody's been here and I don't trust this valve. I don't trust that gas cap. Incorrect purge flow is basically the computer, when it purges, it, it doesn't see that drop in vacuum as it should. It doesn't see that vacuum going back to atmospheric pressure because the purge valve potentially is not working. So here's, let's just do very basic basic rudimentary test here. And this is how your scan tools with bi-directional control will come in handy. So let's go to our actuation test. Let's do a activate the VSV for EVAP control. We're just going to activate. We don't want to monitor data. I'm just going to activate that purge valve, see if it's working. Maybe we have a wiring problem. Maybe it's just a bad one. If it doesn't make any noise, that's our first indication. So, you hear it? It's purging away. That doesn't mean it's good. It just means there is electrical power to it. So now we know the wiring is part of it is good. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to see if this, vac if this purge valve is holding pressure. Because if it's leaking through, we got a problem. This hose right here comes from the intake, so this is always going to have vacuum. 
when the valve is closed, we should not have vacuum across it. So we're going to disconnect this and we're going to unplug it in case it wants to run. When I run this engine and I put my finger here, there should not be any vacuum. So let me start the car real quick. Let's see. I have no vacuum here. This could be the problem. Let's cancel our active test. Let me restart the car. I have nothing. That could be a problem. Well, let's try the test one more time. Nothing. I'm not getting any vacuum through this valve. I'll shut off the active test, shut off the car. Turn the key on, and now let's run it. It's running. So here's what that means. Sorry folks, we have to stop, close the garage door. It's very cold outside. Here's what this means. When I activate this valve, and it's clicking away when the car is off, but when the car is running, it's not working. That means, I know my electrical is good, but that means when I have vacuum pulling on that valve, the solenoid inside is not strong enough to actually pulsate it and open it. It cannot overcome the, the pressure, the strength of the vacuum from the engine. Being aftermarket, and I'm not saying all aftermarket parts are, are not good, but this could be of a not good quality or it just simply failed. It looked newer, but I don't know when it was put on. Maybe it was put on five years ago for all we know. So that's the simple diagnosis. In this case, I'm going to tell the customer we need to start. And this is where you got to warn your customers. I don't know what else has worked in this system. Until I have a working purge valve, I can't really run the test and make sure it's purging correctly. So we're going to start with this, and as a precaution, I'm going to leave this up to them. I want to put an OEM gas cap. This is one mistake I see all the time. Oh, well, aftermarket gas cap is good. It should be work. Not always. Always put a gas cap. Having said that, folks, let's lift this car up. Let's continue looking at the rest of it, and then we'll give them the final report. Well, the first thing I notice is uh, this, uh, this cover is missing a bolt. Not the end of the world, but let's uh, take it off. This is the incorrect bolt. It's too long, but again, not the end of the world. Of course, the clip is missing. So, we have oil leak galore. And that is not something I'm surprised by. This car has some miles. One thing I notice here, this axle is aftermarket or at least the axle nut. The original axle nut is a 12.32 mil or 30 mil. But uh, this, we know this strut is a quick strut. I mean, it looks newer-ish. FCS, that's actually a very cheap old brand, but you know, at some point you have to start say, counting your pennies with old cars. Here's that mount. I mean, I know it doesn't look new, but it's, if you peel this, there's absolutely no rust on it. So that's a newer mount. Very hard to tell until we peel off all the salt. If this is original or not, but that's, we're going to leave that for a second. Because we have oil leak galore over here. That is typical for a 2GR of this age. Rack and pinion, the customer did tell me that this was replaced, so it's newer-ish. Doesn't look like a recent replacement. Control arm does have a small tear, but we're gonna keep an eye on this. But the oil leaks are most likely from the front timing cover. This is uh, very typical. Again, I looked at the head gasket, and it's gonna be near impossible to show you on camera, but maybe if I get underneath it. And I see another problem. Some more oil leaks here, oil pan. This very small rear main right there. 
that I'm not concerned about. But uh, here is the head gasket. Hard to tell. I'm going to try to point it in the editing so you can see it. Try and show you as best as possible here. Really hard to put the camera in there. But I see a problem. Uh, where is the uh, lock bolt for the axle? Now these axles, they have this this clip, which is actually not sitting right here. And then the lock bolt. The clip's not sitting right, the lock bolt's not there. I mean, if this comes off, this axle will come barreling out and it could be a major safety concern. Looking at the rest of the car, looks like we got another leak right there. Not, not a major one from the cam tower. Transmission, the axle is leaking a little bit. You see it's slinging grease right there. But the rest of the car, this is an aftermarket exhaust. You can see it all welded up here. You can understand why. There's usually a joint here that is notorious to leak on these. And uh, they just bypassed it. And it's very, hmm, you know, reserved by commons on this one. Because that's, yeah. The rest of it is original though, and the rest of the car doesn't look extremely rusty. So that's good, because that's usually the deal breaker with these. They get too rusty, it's over, it's done. Brake lines are coated on this car. Of course, the rubber plug, I actually see it, it's right there. Looks like it was pushed in. And this side is the same. Nothing strange to me or something I haven't seen before. Let's check the sway bar link while we're here. Looks okay. Looks like it might have been replaced. Yeah, that's aftermarket sway bar link over there. Well, yeah, it's uh, not, not in bad shape for a car with 200,000 miles. Let's look at the radiator real quick. So you did mention that the radiator was replaced. So that does look good. I don't see any leaks there. This mount looks new. And while we're at it, this mount also looks newerish. So actually, I take that back. This is an original mount. You can see the rest are on this side. So they only replaced the two mounts, the front one and the side one, but not the transmission one, which is okay. And usually if you're buying one of these and you lean underneath it, you'll see all this is wet with oil. Oil filter is original, does have some gas marks on it. Right there. But hey, it's there and it does have a drip. So I don't know if it's actively leaking. Or we're going to have to clean it and see. But uh, yeah, that's if you're ever in the market buying one of these cars with a 2GR, this is an extreme case. You just peek underneath the car. If you see all the subframe is wet like this, you have oil leaks. And the main major one that's the most costly one is the front timing cover. So here is what we have on this Camry with 232,000 miles. Most other brands are 230, not all, but most. Other brands, 232,000 miles, you're already shopping for the first junkyard that pays you more than 300 bucks. This car, however, with all the issues that you have, and most people will look at this and go, you know what, this thing is a pile of junk. It has so many issues. Oh my God, we got to throw it to the garbage. Actually, I test drove this car. It drives smooth, has plenty of power. The transmission shifts perfectly. I don't even know if this transmission was taken care of before fluid-wise. I'm going to have to ask the customer because at this point I would be very hesitant to do anything with it if they're not 100% sure that it has had fluid every 60,000 miles. But this thing drives perfectly fine. You can depend on this car with all its small issues. And I say small issues other than the oil leak. Here is my criteria for Cars that have high miles that are up there in age, because this is over 10 years old, of course, and things do tend to start falling apart, especially in rusty land, although this one is not rusty. Here is your order of importance. The first thing is safety. The car needs to be safe. Suspension is good. Nothing is falling apart. Nothing is loose. The second thing is dependability. 
You don't want this car that now you're keeping it to save money of buying a new car to break down constantly. The third thing is maintenance and auxiliary repairs, what I'm going to call it. Because this oil leak, yes, it's big, but I wouldn't even consider fixing it. What I would consider, however, is cleaning it down completely so it's not causing this smell. And this is not the type of leak that leaks on the exhaust and causes issue. This one is a little bit. So I'm going to recommend a customer if they want, get the engine completely pressure washed and all this oil degreased and gone. That way you're not smelling it all the time. I'm going to recommend this dog bone mount. Although, one thing I will mention, they did say there's vibration at idle and park. I didn't feel it excessive. So we're going to recommend this to them. But the major thing is, this is an emissions failure. Now, I would have to consult with the owner, see, in Illinois, we have emission testing. You got to get this taken care of to continue to renew your plates. But this is something we might need to tackle if we have an emission test. This does not affect drivability. This is pure emissions. So we're not on emergency where you got to get this done right away because things will snowball here. The problem with spending too much money on cars like these, the cars that have high miles, like, yeah, sure, we can take this whole engine apart, replace, reseal the front timing cover and all that good stuff. The problem is we do all that. What if the trans goes out in three months? You can't really guarantee that because the car does have miles. What if the catalytic converters go out? So you want minimal repairs to keep things safe and dependable. Little oil leak here, little oil leak there. As long as they're not a safety concern, we're okay with. But emission failure, that will prevent us from getting the plate. This is something very simple that we might as well just take care of. But something else, and this is advice for you if you're working in other people's cars. I drove this car, and here is how the drive was noise-wise. Hear that creaking sound that's that's all over that's actually from the sunroof structure this is a notorious problem for these Camrys and actually still going on today not to the severity of these were I need to tear down the sun the headliner pull down the sunroof put felt or or little shims between the where the folds of the roof are because they they rattle against each other then tighten retighten the sunroof which is loose and put everything back together. This is absolutely not worth it on a car like this unless the owner is really annoyed by it. But it sounds like the whole car is falling apart, but it actually is not. But the, the owner didn't make any mention of this. And this is how you get yourself in trouble. You work on this car. I replace this, I do the evap repair, and life is good. Then the customer takes the car thinking it's gonna be perfect. They drive it, they all of a sudden notice this noise and they feel like, well, I just spent a small fortune. Why is my car making noise? Even though it was making noise before, that's just how the psychology of people work. So you gotta take your car on test drive before you work on it. Note all these things and tell the customer. That way there is no, ever since you did this, you did that, because all mechanics have dealt with this at some point and it's horrible for the mechanic, horrible for the customer. It's just not worth it. Just test drive the car, make sure you note everything that it has. That way your customer is in the light, they know everything that the car needs, and life is great. Folks, I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you, and you have yourself a wonderful day.